<laughs> well, welcome back everyone to The Numbers. I'm Technically Mexican, your host, and today we're looking at the Super Mario Bros. movie. Now parents, you may have heard the name Mario before. He's a silly little plumber that lives on your kid's Nintendo screen. But what's this? They made a- they made a movie out of him? Yes, indeed. And you may be asking yourself, is this movie safe for my kids? And unfortunately, I have to report to you that it is not. The Super Mario Brothers is clearly an alt-right dog whistle that will inevitably lead your children down the path of radicalization. Despicable. So, you may be asking yourselves, just what is so horrible about this movie? And unfortunately, I must report that it simply does not do enough to push the LGBTP propaganda onto your sweet, innocent youngsters. I scoured this movie for signs of virtue signaling and diversity, and I rarely found a single drop. In fact, it may shock your ears to learn that there is only a single rainbow in the movie. And it's a road that the characters drive on, horribly defacing the face of pride. Mario is clearly an alt-right incel spending the entire movie trying to rescue his bros and stepping in as the white savior of Mushroom Kingdom. The only relatable character is Bowser, who spends the entire movie lusting after Princess Peach who does not once reciprocate his unrequited love. And unfortunately, the movie paints Bowser as the villain. It's a pity, so don't let your kids see this film. They will only inevitably end up wanting to fight for those horrible virtues known as good and truth. Talk about a hero complex. Am I right? And this is the sad state of Hollywood, unfortunately proving that age-old adage true. Don't get woke, go broke. Sorry, what is that? You're, you're telling me this movie is breaking records? I don't believe you, that can't be true. I don't think I can do this bit for much longer, so to, so we're, we're gonna call it there. That's right, the Super Mario Brothers movie has swoopeth in and shattered opening weekend box office records, becoming the most successful animated movie of all time. That, that, that is, if it, if it has the legs to continue being successful. It's already been the most successful opening weekend for an animated film. Of, of all time, so it's it's not gonna be hard to, to main, maintain that success. Over the weekend, this movie made $146 million, which is fantastic for a regular movie and phenomenal for, for an animated film. I'm recording this video on Monday, so including Sunday's numbers, which technically count as the second week, the movie has already made over $200 million. That's crazy good and that's just the domestic box office if you include the international numbers it's almost double that if this movie can keep the momentum it will easily make a billion dollars which is absolutely unheard of for an animated film so to what does the mario brothers movie Oh, it's success. Well, you can't discount that it's part of a strong IP and has a built-in fan base, but those things alone do not guarantee a movie's success. We know that painful truth evidenced by the horribly declining numbers of Marvel movies and Star Wars. So why is the Mario movie successful? Because it's good. That's it. It's a good movie. And the cherry on top it doesn't spend a single second trying to shove the woke LGBTP propaganda down your throat. What a novel concept. It's just a movie. That's it. Who would have thought that all a movie has to do to be successful these days is not be woke? But don't just take my word for it. Let's look at the numbers. Let's compare it to Disney's Lightyear, which should be a comparable IP. You've got the Toy Story movies, and you're branching out and doing a you're doing a space movie. You've got the name Disney attached, which is historically family friendly. But this movie only made fifty million dollars for its opening weekend and tapped out at two hundred million dollars worldwide, with roughly a fifty-fifty split between domestic and international audiences. And while those numbers aren't horrible, they're pretty bad for a Disney movie. And considering that the production budget for this film was $200 million, this movie absolutely 
lost Disney money. That number doesn't include any of the advertising. So what made Lightyear fail despite being a strong IP? Well, maybe it was the fact that as part of the advertising for this film, Disney decided to insult its core audience by calling anyone who didn't particularly care for the LGBTP messaging inserted into the film idiots, and saying that we would die off like the dinosaurs. Unfortunately for Disney, it was only Lightyear's box office legs that died off like the dinosaurs. Look at Disney's Strange New Worlds, which also celebrated the LGBTP agenda as part of their marketing. Strange Worlds had an opening weekend of $12 million and finally tapped out at just under $70 million worldwide. Please take note that this film's production budget was $135 million, a catastrophic loss for Disney. So let's jump in our time machines and look back at an older film that wasn't plagued by all of this woke nonsense. The Lego Movie, which I think is a pretty good comparison. It's an animated film based off of a strong IP. They both have video games. And guess what? The advertising for this movie was just about the movie. So how did it perform back in 2014 when it came out? Hey, look at that. It was successful. It opened to $70 million and only stopped earning money just under $500 million worldwide. And with a production budget of $60 million, the Lego movie made freaking bank. It also sold a bunch of Legos, which I assume we will also now see for the Mario movie. But what's crazy is that the Mario movie, after their opening weekend, is almost already beating out the Lego movie's entire run. It's almost like Hollywood has deprived audiences of regular movies for such a long time that audiences are starving for just a few movies that put the storytelling before the messaging. So the Mario movie is already blowing the Lego movie out of the water, but what does it compare to? Let's look at Marvel, a wildly successful IP. Their newest film being Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. This was supposed to be like the next Avengers movie. With a production budget of $200 million, it only made $100 million opening weekend and tapped out under $500 million. And while those numbers seem big, when you compare them to the production budget, which doesn't include any of the multiple reshoots that this film went under, and when you compare this film to previous Marvel entries, this is really bad. And the Mario movie has almost already overtaken them. The trend that you see now with Marvel movies is they do have a dedicated fan base that will go out and faithfully see Marvel movies opening weekend, but they no longer have the legs that they used to have in theaters after that first preliminary weekend. So yes, $100,000 is pretty dang good for an opening weekend. But if you compare this Ant-Man movie with the previous two Ant-Man movies, you see the trend I'm talking about. While Quantumania had the largest opening weekend, after the entire run, it made less money than the first two films. The first two Ant-Man movies had smaller opening weekends, 50,000 and 70,000, but they had much longer legs. And this is the trend that you're seeing with all Marvel movies nowadays. Look at Eternals. Had a pretty strong box office opening weekend, 70 million, and tapped out at the end of its run at 400 million. With a production budget of 200 million, not a good sign. What the Mario movie is comparable to is the first Avengers movie. It had an opening weekend of 200 million and ended up making 1.5 billion dollars by the end of its run. So you can see how the Mario Brothers movie could easily make a billion dollars. It's crazy. The Mario Brothers movie is comparable to the numbers of the Avengers movie. And this is their first outing. Imagine the numbers Nintendo could pull if they keep making films. Just as long as they don't take the same path that Marvel and Star Wars did and start insulting their core audience, they could see huge success. And the media will blame superhero movie fatigue, which I believe is a complete lie. People aren't tired of seeing superhero movies. They're tired of seeing bad movies. Just look at Spider-Man No Way Home. It was sandwiched between woke Marvel movies that were all losing money and ended up smashing box office records, making almost two billion dollars. Superhero fatigue does not exist, but bad movie fatigue is oh so real. For one more recent example of this, 
just look to Top Gun Maverick, a very simple movie about flying planes, and that's it. There's no woke messaging, it just focuses on planes, the story. And what did Top Gun make? $1.5 billion, with an opening weekend of $130 million. Really? The, Mar the Mario Brother movies beat Top Gun Maverick's opening weekend. So now we just have to wait and see if the Mario Brothers movie has the same legs as Top Gun Maverick. And I'm pretty sure it does. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>